Doom Patrol opens in Paraguay, 1984, where an obviously evil bad guy named Eric Morden gets transformed into a supervillain called Mr. Nobody, and he's so powerful that he breaks the fourth wall and narrates the entire season. Larry Trainer is a pilot who flies into an energy force, bonding him with the negative spirit, and his plane falls to the ground and explodes, which condemns him to the life of a mummy. Rita Farr is an actress who accidentally fell into some radioactive water or something, and she starts melting away, so she runs off screen. Crazy Jane has 64 different personalities, each with with different powers living inside of her and she likes to swear a lot. Cliff Steele is a race car driver who also swears a lot. One day out on the track he finds out that his wife is cheating on him and this distracts him long enough that he ends up in a horrible accident. The next thing he knows he wakes up to a British guy asking him to try moving his head. Unfortunately this guy Niles Calder aka the chief was only able to save his brain and he jammed it into a robot. Actually wait no. What happened was that Cliff caused his own accident by driving his family into a semi truck. One day chief decides to head out so the team takes his opportunity to have some fun in the nearby town of Cloverton. Rita turns into a blob and Cliff has to stop her. Chief sees a donkey on the way back and he tells the team that a great danger is coming and they need to run. Everybody agrees to disagree and they all immediately change their minds and join up with Cliff to protect the town. The same donkey appears again and farts out the mind is the limit as Mr. Nobody appears behind Niles and creates a vortex sucking everything into it. The next episode continues the craziness with Mr. Nobody taking Niles into the hole. Jane jumps in after them as Cloverton is sucked in as well. Then we briefly cut to Detroit to beat Victor Stone aka Cyborg. He's not that close with his father Silas Stone but Victor decides that he needs to help his old friend Niles upon hearing what happened to Cloverton. Cliff bumps into Cyborg as he's chasing a donkey and it spits out Jane. They start asking her what she saw in there but she's like I don't know. Ask Katie. Cliff watches interview tapes between Jane and Niles and discovers that all of Jane's personalities reside in a place called the underground and that Katie doesn't like being questioned which is exactly what Cyborg's doing and it triggers a cool fight scene where we see a bunch of her personas attack the team with things like fireballs and words. Cyborg ends things by bodying Jane and locking her into a room. Later they find out that the donkey is actually a doorway so they all go inside and put on headphones so they can hear Mr. Nobody narrate about their lives. But the negative spirit saves everybody and they pop back out along with Cloverton. The team figures out that Mr. Nobody, the donkey, and Paraguay are all connected so they decide to go on a road trip to Paraguay. Larry breaks down the bus and they stay at a motel and we learn more about his character. Larry slowly drifted away from his wife and kids but he also couldn't be with his partner John Bowers because homosexuality wasn't accepted at the time. After his accident, his wife took the kids and left him, and he told John to move on as he isolated himself from the world. The next day, one of Jane's personalities called Flint just teleports them to Paraguay, and they take a bus to Fooktopia. They learn that Von Fook was the guy that transformed Eric Morden into Mr. Nobody, but Niles interrupted the transformation to shoot a few bullets before he grabs something and leaves. This Von Fook guy is still alive because he attached a tube to his neck and he wants Jane's powers, but they end up killing him and they all go home on a jet that Silas gave to Cyborg. In episode 4, a British guy by the name of Willoughby Kipling storms into Doom Manor demanding to know where Niles is. He explains that the cult of the unwritten book wants to read a book to summon a giant eye called the Decreator creator to destroy the world. With the help of a singing oracle horse, they find out that the book is actually a boy named Elliot and they manage to rescue him. Kip wants to blowtorch the kid but the team has other ideas. If they shut down the gates to Nurnheim, it'll prevent the cult from coming to read Book Boy. This sends Cliff and Jane to Spain in search of a priest whose hands are actually the gateway to Nurnheim but they get sucked inside. Later, a bunch of henchmen attack the manor and take the boy away to read him and a giant eye appears in the sky and it starts blinking things out of existence. The chief returns and explains that he's working with Mr. Nobody, because if the world ends, how will there be an epic season finale? Their plan is to create their own giant eye and save the day. To do so, they'll need a specific version of Jane to create the cult of the rewritten book to summon the recreator. Then they read the dog book, summon another giant eye, they have a staring contest, and everything goes back to normal. With the disaster averted, Mr. Nobody slows down time to take Niles back, but Cyborg's arm cannon wasn't designed to charge up in slow motion, so it explodes. Cliff Cliff activates the SOS signal and it starts rebuilding his arm and Jane pauses to ask what the Doom Patrol is. Rita walks into the room asking why they're researching the Doom Patrol. The Doom Patrol was a group of superheroes and Rita was romantically involved with Steven Dayton aka Mento who helped her to control her powers. Flit teleports them to a school where the former superheroes have been teaching but something isn't quite right. It turns out that the team fought and lost to Mr. Nobody and they disbanded. He used their own fears against them to corrupt their pathetic little minds and they're all old and weak and mentally ill with Mento projecting an illusion of a school. Cliff discovers that his daughter Clara is still alive and Cyborg helps to connect them on social media after Silas enables Pyro 
Travis Simone for real this time and lets him live his own life. Halfway through this season, Vic decides it's time for some group therapy. They need to talk and open up about their problems if they want to beat Mr. Nobody and not end up like the Doom Patrol. Basically, everyone had a past of being a misfit or an outcast, they didn't really belong and they had to hide their true selves from the world. The name Rita Farr is just a stage name. Larry had been living a life of fear and lies because of his homosexuality. Vic had to go through each day with the burden and guilt that he killed his mom. Jane had an abusive father and never experienced what it's like to belong and be loved. And Cliff just wants to spend some time with his daughter. In fact, he gets so mad he drives out to see Bump asking where Clara is. But he gets blasted with a shotgun and it turns out that this entire thing was a hallucination and he was fighting the team. They go on to have their group therapy session but it ends with Jane and Cliff having an argument and Cyborg slamming him into the ground. Admiral Whiskers emerges from his mouth and crawls away. We find out that he wanted to get revenge on the team for killing his parents so he crawled into Cliff earlier that day and started messing up his circuits. The 8th episode starts with Agent Morris Wilson running around in a forest and he runs into a street in the middle of nowhere and disappears. A package arrives at Doom Manor from an address called Danny Street so they decide to go there. Upon arriving, the street starts animating and points them to a club. There they find out that Danny is a genderqueer sentient street and offers a home to those who have been cast out by society. Danny and the Dannysons have been running from the Bureau of Normalcy, the same people who kidnapped and experimented on Larry all those years ago. I'm not sure how you track a sentient street that can teleport around the world, but they do, and the Danizens decide they've had enough of running from the Bureau, and they decide to make a stand. Mora Lee Corrupt, who is actually Agent Morris Wilson, gives his former partner a good beating, Larry punches the air, and Danny sends them away with a comic book. Meanwhile, with Cliff and Rita, one of Jane's most toxic personalities, appropriately named Karen, manifests itself, and she's hell-bent on marrying this guy with her mind control powers. At the wedding, Jane goes all psycho and she gets dragged away into the underground, leaving behind a lifeless body. Episode 9 brings us to the underground and we get to see all of Jane's personalities on display. They keep telling her that since she's the primary, she needs to be on top to maintain equilibrium or else the whole place collapses and they all die or something. In the real world, the negative spirit acts as a bridge for Cliff to enter into the underground. After getting tricked, beat up, and locked in a jail cell, he punches his way out. He finds out that Miranda used to be a primary until she jumped into the well, and that's exactly where Jane is headed right now and he needs to stop her. After a long goose chase of Jane telling him off, they finally end up at the well and they defeat the final boss that is her abusive father and return to the real world. Back in 1913, Niles and his partner Alistar are investigating a beast for the Bureau of Oddities. They get into a little bit of trouble and Niles is rescued by an immortal Neanderthal named Slava. They fall in love and he learns that she controls the beast. One day, Alistar returns and tells Niles that they're now called the Bureau of Normalcy and their mission is to eradicate anything that's odd, like Slava and the beast. To throw off the Bureau, Niles leads him to his death and returns to the Bureau saying that there's nothing to report. In the present day, the Bureau recruits the Beard Hunter, who can track people just by eating their hair. He infiltrates Doom Manor and eats some of the Chief's hair, but Cyborg and Rita detain him for an interrogation. He manages to get away and later ends up at some strange place and the beast appears behind him. Cliff decides he needs to be there for his daughter after Bump dies to an alligator. When they arrive, they find out how much Bump really meant to her, and Cliff decides he needs to prove his love to her by retrieving the watch that he gave to her which she gave to Bump which is now inside the alligator. Unfortunately, he fails to find the courage to speak with Clara and he leaves the watch on the table. Vic finds out that he's becoming more machine than human as his operating system grid is slowly taking over. He even opens up his arm to check and sure enough it's all metal under there so he removes Grid completely. And then he goes with Jane to meet Dolores, the wife of Flex Mentallo, a lead that they got from the comic book. But they get ambushed by the Bureau and Vic gets taken away to the ant farm. Back at home, Larry is repeatedly shown visions of his past with John Bowers so he decides it's time to pay him a visit. He reconciles with a very old John Bowers and he gets the closure he needs to finally move on. In his cell, Victor slowly starts to lose it as Grid somehow starts rebooting and keeps looping videos of his mother's death. The team along with Silas divides a plan to get caught by by the Bureau, then Rita oozes out of Cliff and they free everyone and everything, creating utter chaos in the Bureau. Silas arrives to save Cyborg and tries to get him to reinstall Grid. He gets more pop-up ads and this sends him over the edge as he starts punching and beating Silas. In the end, Mr. Nobody shows up behind him saying that it was him all along, and the team arrive to see Vic holding Silas in his arms just like in the painting. Rita recognizes that they freed Flex Mentallo and Flit teleports them all out of there and Silas to a hospital. Back in 1964, Flex is tricked into rescuing a cat from a tree which teleports into the ant farm. He's put in a cell next to Larry who thinks it's futile to escape so he shrivels up in a ball and cries. Eventually, the Bureau uses his wife against him and he gives up as well. Except that Flex doesn't remember any of this so they try to jog his memory by giving him a haircut and bring his wife to see him. As soon as they recognize each other, she doesn't feel so good and she starts turning into dust. 
dust, and this triggers all of his memories and powers to come back. Larry and the Negative Spirit unite as one. Jane finally accepts Cliff's apology for running into the underground. Rita accepts herself for who she is. Cyborg reinstalls Grid, and Mr. Nobody can barely contain his excitement that after 13 long episodes, he finally has a team of superheroes to fight against. With Flex Mentallo on the team, they head back to Danny the Street, who reveals that Chief is in the white space, and to get there, Flex needs to flex the right muscle. He messes up big time on the first attempt, but he gets it on the second try, and they end up at the day before their lives are about to change forever. But Mr. Nobody is offering them a chance to change it if they give up looking for the chief. But our misfits have spent 14 and a half episodes coming to terms with who they are, so they come face to face with Niles Calder and Mr. Nobody, ready for the epic fight. But Cyborg just appears behind him and shoots him dead. They all return and suit up as the new Doom Patrol and head out on their first mission just to be obliterated by a giant robot. Then the day repeats itself again and again and again until another Cyborg appears and they figure out that they never left the white space at all. Mr. Nobody says that he'll straight up just leave and run away if Niles tells the the truth, that there were no accidents and he's responsible for everything that happened to them. In the season finale, we finally figure out what happened to them. In his pursuit of immortality to protect his daughter, Niles Calder orchestrated all the events that led to their transformations. He was blinded by his pursuit of immortality that he never really considered the consequences until one day it finally broke him. Six months pass and Mr. Nobody grows so bored that he decides to team up with Ezekiel, the talking cockroach, and Admiral Whiskers which you saw earlier. But by trapping Danny into a painting, this exhausts all of his powers and the chief's daughter supersizes his sidekicks which overthrew him and now he's hanging out in the bar like a loser. The team is reunited by the sound of music and the chief explains to them he gave Danny one mission, to hide and protect his daughter, and now he needs their help to get them back. They reluctantly agree to help him and enter the painting just by staring at it hard enough. With some encouragement, Mr. Loser starts narrating again and our heroes end up inside Ezekiel, protecting them from the nuclear blast as Larry rips open a portal to get them all out of there. They emerge from Ezekiel only to find out that they've shrunk into the size of a cockroach. Danny the Street is reduced to Danny the Brick, and Mr. Nobody forgot to narrate the rest of the story so he's stuck in the painting with Beard Hunter. And in the heat of all this, they manage to get his daughter back, and Niles Calder introduces Dorothy Spinner to the team. 